We're now around halfway through the Android Q beta phase and with beta 3 there are a few notable additions to unpack, so let's get to it. First up is the new native dark theme. In the last beta update you had to enable it via ADB or alternatively leave your device in the battery saver mode. Now it's right there as a quick settings tile that you can enable and disable as you see fit. The dark theme also now encompasses a few system apps like Google Photos with more system apps now properly supported. Gesture controls are getting a huge overhaul in Android Q Beta 3 with the addition of the new full gestural navigation and there's also the ability to return to the three icon navbar of older Android versions. Google has lifted the gesture navigation method right out of the iOS playbook and it works really well and neatly in practice. Once you've activated gestural navigation, swiping up and holding heads you into your recent apps. Swiping up heads into your app drawer and swiping left or right across the navigation line will switch you between currently opened applications. To go back, you do swipe in from the edges of your display and this does cause some problems with sliding nav bars and menus and it is a little bit frustrating practice. Of course, this is a beta, so we do expect that to be fixed in a future update. You can also return to the partial two bar navbar, which can be reactivated if you do like the hybrid gestures, but with that constant home button. With Q Beta 3, there's also a new auto battery saver mode toggle, which actually works in reverse when you stick your device on charge. As soon as you reach 90% battery mode, the battery saver will disable itself, meaning you don't need to have any input. You can't set what percent it turns off, but it is great in practice as previously it wouldn't disable itself even if your battery was fully charged. Wi-Fi network sharing via QR code was brought in via previous Android Q betas, but now that too has had a bit of a tweak. You can still share your Wi-Fi network via QR code, but you're now also able to see the associated network password, provided you've already connected to said network. It's a really great way to now share your network without fumbling around trying to find a router password or download a QR code reader on another device if it isn't able to read them natively. Android Q Beta 3 now also adds Smart Reply natively to all applications. There is now no need for the app to support it, it just works automatically. It has also added enhanced features like being able to work out an address and then giving you the option to hop straight into Google Maps for quick directions. One of the best things is that all contextual replies will now work without any developer input, opening up better responses absolutely everywhere in Android. The final major update that we think you'll love is the improved and enhanced notification control which gives you much more detail when dismissing or muting app notifications. When you long press a notification in the notification center, it will tell you exactly what each option will achieve in a colorful and more detailed pane. For those not versed in Android and don't understand what the icons may have meant previously, this is a great way for you to control your notifications without very much input. So while we haven't delved into each and every single new feature or setting brought in by Android Q Beta 3, those are a few of the more notable inclusions that are available straight away. Let us know your own favourites or some that we may have missed that you enjoy in the comments section below. I'll also leave some download links and links to our full Q Beta 3 rundown in the description below if you do want to flash the update yourself. Then before you head off, remember to subscribe to the channel for more Android Q content. But until next time, this is Damien and I will speak to you later.